is the Volkswagen T-Roc. Now, interestingly, it's inspired from the English word rock, which means it's supposed to rock the segment. Now, which segment does the T-Roc actually rock? It's slated in between the premium end of Freta Feltos and the Tigma Hall space in its own family. And of course, the Škoda Karok in its extended family. This is also a 20 plus lakh crossover. And when I say the word crossover, you might not like it, but this is a crossover, but it's meant for a different set of people. It's made differently. And that's the reason why all its 1000 CBUs are almost sold out. It's not the biggest looking car in its segment and it definitely is not a SUV. Now that also appeals me because when I say the word SUV, it might shimmer down the excitement, but you see the SUVs are not actually a driver oriented cars. Now, when you drive this, it will really give you a sense of grip because of its width, because of its lower height, and because it has a better center of gravity as opposed to the SUVs. Now it started raining, so before it rains even harder, let's take a look at the exteriors before we move to the interiors, and of course, then the driving. The grille on the front further accentuates the width. It neatly spreads across the front fascia and is outlined by this chrome strip. The DRLs, which are placed under the headlamps, which actually double up beautifully as turn indicators, again, is very different. Further below are the fog lamps and the three lighting elements on either side add up to give it a very bold look. I really like these sharp creases on the bonnet. It's a trick only German cars can play and it adds to the overall striking appeal that the T-Rock has. If you've liked the front of the design, but if you ask me, the rear is more imposing. The rear looks more uh, more striking also because of these, these lines here. It adds an element of dynamism and adds a character to the entire package, which T-Rock is. But I don't like this fake exhaust. This was not required, though it adds to the look of the car, but these are fake, completely fake. Now, if you look at the boot space, which is about 445 liters, so it has a very interesting through loading hatch from which you can slide in a longer thing and it can really extend that. And if you want to increase the boot space even more, you can open up the seats even further and you can see now you have a very big boot space, almost 900 liters. Another thing which is very annoying is it doesn't have an auto tailgate, forget that. It doesn't have anything to hold. So you literally have to push it and dirty your hand considering it's raining and you have mud here, you dirty your hand to close the boot space, which is kind of annoying. Now the rear seats is a struggle. Now this is what I'm saying, it's a two bench and not a three. If you don't believe me, take a look at the people trying to sit and if there are three six footers trying to snuggle inside, it's a tough one which they are trying to adjust. Of course the long transmission line adds to the already squeezed in space, this is what I was talking about. But the one thing which is good about this is the window pane which completely comes down and that you can see at least you can have the entire hand come out. The moment you open the gate, it will remind you of that you are opening something very strong, something very German. There you are, when you open the ignition, the digital cluster welcomes you with a very minimalistic welcome. And uh, by the time you open the sunroof, which is not the biggest of sunroof, but it's got a decent sized sunroof. And the digital cluster is very well laid out. There are no much frills about it. Very, very basic but very, very classy at the same time. The hot plastics are everywhere. They could have done away with that because you're spending close to 23 lakhs on road. So you expect something more uh, rich and premium. However, it looks very neat. It gives you a sense of grandness. It gives you a sense of a very suavicious kind of a feeling. So there's no sense of feeling that you're, you're inside a very small cabin. In fact, the moment you open the door, you feel like you're sitting somewhere very big because also the width is slightly bigger than the average SUV cars. Now the in-car tech section, you have the regular frills, you have a two USB port, it doesn't have a wireless charging tray. The digital cockpit of the t rock is very neatly laid out. It tells you almost all information right in front of you. You can also have a navigation setup. t rock is offered only in one transmission, one price, one model. This one is 150 PS of power and 250 Nm of torque, which has made it to a 7-speed automatic 
DSG gearbox and it's quite fun to drive. The sense of uh, road grip and uh, you know when you're trying to especially speed up it gives you the confidence of a complete control over the car. And the best part about Tiro is offered in very interesting colors. There are very very energetic interesting colors and interesting need for that which essentially is yellow, blue and orange but the kurkuma yellow that I'm driving is really a very fascinating color. One more thing which is very trivial but very important is that you can connect to a Bluetooth while even on the move. Yes, that's possible. This is completely a European car. It's a CBU. So it has a lane assist which sometimes can get very annoying because especially when you're driving and trying to make a twist and turn. This, that lane, lane assist will come in and remind you that okay go straight but then you'll get used to it in fact it becomes firmer when you are trying to take turns or take too many twists the T-Rob comes equipped with ACT which is active cylinder technology that senses the driving pattern accordingly activates or deactivates two out of the four cylinders resulting in reduced fuel consumption now the switch actually happens faster than a blink of an eye once it senses your driving pattern. It also has heated mirrors, especially during rains, it comes really handy. T-Rock is the most striking car. Even from very far, you can spot the difference. Well, the umbrella is out because it's tired raining. It's meant for a different set of audience. It's an exclusive car. It's not something that you can accentuate with price, size, features. Because that's the space that you're looking at, then you have better options. But if you're looking for something which is fun to drive, which is German, which is rock solid, which is like a T-Rock and which is different, then this certainly is the one. Now I'll put the umbrellas down and you can leave your comments what you think about the T-Rock. We'll head back to where it all came from. Cheers.